But a local doctor just got back to San Diego after helping children in Mongolia with eye care. Yeah, he was part of a team aboard the Flying Eye Hospital. It's a one-of-a-kind plane equipped with an operating room, a classroom, and a recovery room. And joining us now to speak about this time uh, here is uh, Dr. Henry O'Halloran, ophthalmologist at Rady Children's Hospital. Thank you for joining us here at Fox 5. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved and also a little bit about the nonprofit that organizes all of this. So there are a lot of doctors um, in the U.S. who do a certain amount of charity work, helping those less fortunate. I was contacted by Orbis, which is an international not-for-profit that basically teaches countries how to run their ophthalmology programs better when resources are limited. They asked me to come to Africa with them a couple of years ago, asked me to come to Mongolia with them uh, a few weeks ago. Talk about the impact a little bit um, that you're able to have on the children there on the doctors there and how it can kind of uh, permeate, I guess, and, and, and teaching them how to do this now can help a lot more people going forward. So there are approximately 1.1 billion people in the world who, who have um, poor eyesight. 90% of those have avoidable poor eyesight because they live in low and middle income co countries where there are minimal resources, minimal trained, qualified people, minimal programs. Um, so the purpose to Orbis is to come in and help train doctors and teach them how to implement programs to address these issues. So what have you learned operating in these countries? Um, you know, obviously you've, you've been teaching the physicians there how to do this, but what have you learned, I guess, you know, that, that has made you better? Um, I'd, I'd like to think it's made me more grateful for the opportunities that the U.S. has given me since I'm an immigrant. but. When you, when you teach, you become a better doctor because you have to think about things, how you say them, how you, how you teach your training participants. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Mongolia, I had two female ophthalmologists who spent the week with me. And by the end of the week, after um, five days of surgery, they were just amazing. My very last day, I scrubbed with them. I didn't do a single thing. I mean, I sat there and watched them, and, and I realized that they have such a thirst for knowledge. Anything you teach them, they, they, they'll just come back with it in even in a better way. Yeah, when you teach like that, it kind of takes you back to fundamentals, right? Where you have mm -hmm. to kind of like go through it step by step and help them out. Um, talk to us about, uh, you know, how this happens. So like you get on the plane, you fly there. The plane itself is the hospital, is that right? Well, so I flew separately from the plane okay. because the plane, it, it is a hospital, but it's a regular plane, it's an MD-10 lands at an airport and then it's like watching an anthill. They, there are people just moving stuff off at generators, medical gas and equipment, oxygen, water purifiers. And then the plane has an operating room. It has a sort of a training area for simulation, a lecture theater, a pre-op area and a post-op area. So patients who are screened online in a program called CyberSight come to the hospital, they, they come onto the plane, they're operated on the plane, they're sent to local areas for recovery for the evening, back to the plane the next day for post-op care. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. I've done a lot of stuff and seen a lot of stuff, but this is really cool. Here's a model of the plane here. It's donated by FedEx. We're on our fourth version of this, of this Orbis Flying Eye Hospital. It's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, technologically, it's amazing, you know, having all of that there. Tell us a few of your stories, I guess, about some of the people that you've encountered um, that, that really um, changed their life, the vision changed their life. Well, I had one young lady who came to see me who I operated on the airplane. She did surgery previously, and the parents felt that the result maybe left her even a little worse than she was. She wouldn't go to school. Um, you know, it was, it was a complicated surgery because it had a lot of scar tissue, but she was an excellent teaching case for my local um, training participants. Afterwards, she was absolutely perfect, eyes straight. Mom, dad, and baby girl were all crying in the post-op area. Oh. And the little girl said to me via an interpreter, I feel like I'm beautiful again. Oh. I want to go back to school. So that's just amazing. And changing, changing lives, truly. T talk to us before we let you go, Doc, about uh, who was on this plane with you, who was on this mm -hmm. mission with you, and what it's like to represent San Diego and, and bring your knowledge and our community to a place that's halfway around the world. I like to feel like I'm a little bit like the Padres representing us around the world, <laughs> but um, the plane has people from all over the world. I mean, and every different religious persuasion. We have doctors, nurses, administrators, 
Um, it's really cool because you know you show up, you have to be a team player from day one, you have to know how to collaborate, and it may not be done exactly the way you want, you have to fit in. It was amazing for me to be able to say to people, you know, I'm an American ophthalmologist, I'm so proud to be here, you know, but, but we have Europeans, we have South Americans, we have people from the Caribbean. I mean, it was a big smorgasbord of the international community and everybody was happy to be there. There were long hours mm -hmm. um, for people and nobody complained. Um, very quickly, I know we're running out of time here, but do you run into any diseases or inflictions or things like that that we don't encounter much here? So in, in, the, in nine of 10 people who have poor eyesight in these countries, it's preventable. Low and, low and middle income countries. In the US, certainly in San Diego, we've addressed a lot of that with hygiene and better water. And um, there is a very prevalent disease that Orbis deals with a lot that I did not see there called trachoma, which is preventable. They have huge programs all around the world. Orbis has probably prevented blindness in hundreds of thousands of people by simple hygiene efforts and implementation of sanitation. So, I mean, it's, it's a legacy 40 years and, and growing. It's amazing. Really great to see. Yes. And uh, we appreciate great you coming work. here to talk to us about it and representing San Diego around the world. So good work by you, Dr. O'Halloran, and uh, all the best to you and your future missions as well. We'd love to hear more when you come back. I'm happy to come back. Okay, right. great. Thank great to you. see you. Thanks.